Hello and welcome to the strategic analysis video for the May 2016 operational case study exam on bath and body lotion manufacturer Sanchez Navarra. Now I'm sure you've all had a look at the case study already and some of you may have watched the pre-scene analysis videos. But for those of you who haven't, I've got a brief introduction to the company and the industry here. Now we know that Sanchez Navarra is a successful company. It has a reasonable proportion of the luxury bath and body product market within Kaland, which is a successful developed economy. Now I'm sure it's a product that you've all used before, but do we really know how the product gets into your hand, into your bathroom? What is the supply chain of the organization like? What is, how is the industry set up with regards to suppliers, manufacturers, and retailers? And that is what we will discuss in this video. We're going to apply the various operational models you've learnt throughout your studies, particularly your E1 studies, and also we're going to summarize the case as a whole. So with that in mind, let's move on. So. This is the, the overview of how I am going to assess the company, assess the case using the rational business model. And what this basically has is a, a set of different models detailing where the company is now, where the company wants to be, and how they are going to get there. So we'll start by looking at where the company wants to go. Where does it ultimately want to end up? Where do the founders, where did the TRU group ultimately want the company to be? And the various models we'll use to look at this are the critical success factors of the organization. We'll look at the various stakeholders of the organization and where they want to be, what they want the company to achieve. And we'll also look at the, the overviewing or overall topics of governance and ethics and their importance to the organization. We'll start by looking at mission statements. Now, a mission statement is all about what the company is. If you will look at one particular sentence that summarizes the company, that is what the mission statement is. A mission statement should be something that the average person can look at and see what the company is, read what the company is all about. It also provides a lot of focus for the company's employees. It provides a common goal of what they are striving for. And this is particularly useful for larger organizations where perhaps there is a lot of segregation between the different departments. They aren't aware of what each other department is doing, but if they know where the ultimate company is going to go where the, the company wants to be as a whole, this will help them work towards that goal. They'll realize that what they are doing has a role to play in the company's overall growth. And I've summarized that here by saying that it provides a common purpose, a common focus for the organization as a whole. It also gives something, some context for the directors when they are coming up with the strategies of the organization. So what should be in a mission statement? Now, looking at the pre-scene, there isn't any real indication that the company has a mission statement. We have been given some goals of the organization by the, the founders themselves, such as to develop a body wash that you know, helps people that gives them nourished skin that smells great. These are goals of the organization, but are they the mission? What ultimately does the company, what ultimately does Sanchez Navarra want to do? And Campbell summarized these mission statements by giving us what is known as the four Ps. It's obviously been different to the four Ps of the marketing mix. So let's take a look at each one. Why does the organization exist? Now, the company exists because the founders felt that the products on the market, uh, luxury body wash and body lotion products, were not up to scratch. And that's why they created their own, to provide something that was better than currently out there. The next part is strategy. How is the organization competing? How are they operating? Where are they selling? 
And of course, we know that a majority of sales come from department stores. So perhaps they're going after the more premium market, more affluent consumers who shop in department stores. The third step is values. What does the organization stand for? We know that they want to provide a luxury product. Its quality is what they are going for, not um, being the cheapest out there, but being the best out there. And customers are willing to pay the premium for that. They're also perhaps an ethical company. They like to use natural ingredients. They like to source as locally as possible, hence the, the made in Kaland label that they've strived so far to achieve. And finally, uh, finally policies. So these are the, the things that employees of the organization are expected to follow, expected to act. So if we think about ethics, then as a, a company that sells a lot directly to the consumer, where you have the people within the department stores on the concession stands selling directly, how are they expected to act? If they are an ethical company, then perhaps the, the hard sale that some companies give is not what they want. It's not what the, the concession stand workers at St. Just Navarra should be doing. They should be perhaps trying to give people the best possible product for their needs rather than trying to sell them the one with the highest profit margin or force them into buying a product when they don't necessarily need it. They should be listening to the consumer and giving them something that, fulfill, that fulfills their needs. So now we move on to objectives and performance measurements. So we know where the company wants to go. Perhaps they want to be this larger organization that trades all across the world, that provides the best high quality products. But how are they going to measure whether they are getting there or not? Now, we know from the case study that there were a few targets. The founders made it very clear that they wanted to grow the business, that they wanted to extend the business overseas. We know that they want to use natural resources and use uh, and source them sustainably as much as they can. So that will feeds into corporate social responsibility and make one that ultimately is beneficial to the consumer that hydrates skin. So it's more of a, a skincare company than a beauty company as such. They're not just going after the quick fix of improving appearance, etc. They want to provide a product that is good for the consumer, a health conscious consumer. Now we don't know too much about specific targets yet, such as when they want to be a large organization, when they're going to start introducing the product to other markets, etc. So we could be given more about this in the actual exam. And I've also put a little section here that just says if they haven't done this, then that is a weakness in the company. A company needs a good, solid, robust plan if it wants to achieve its targets. And I've put another section here about balanced scorecards. Now, balanced scorecards are essentially a series of different metrics of measuring performance. Now, in the olden days, a lot of companies only measured themselves on whether they were making money or not. However, that's not necessarily sustainable. You, uh, the point of a balanced scorecard is about meeting various different metrics. And this could be many things such as environmental targets, as in cutting down on their pollution, or sourcing more locally to reduce the, the air miles of the products that they use or the ingredients that they use in their production. It could also be human resource things such as staff satisfaction or giving more training towards staff so that they, they grow as the company grows. So rather than bringing in new people all the time, you can reduce staff turnover by giving staff members their own goals, by providing them training, allowing them to move up within the organization. So in summary, we were given some overall overarching goals of the company, ultimately that they want to grow and start introducing themselves to new markets, but we weren't given anything specific yet. So that's an indicator that such a thing could come up in the unseen information. 
So now we move on to critical success factors. So critical success factors are things that are important to the company above anything else. They are things that perhaps this company, Sanchez Navarro does, that no other company in the industry does, or ones that are essential for Sanchez Navarro to keep competing. If it doesn't fulfill its critical success factors or it loses one of its critical success factors, then ironically, that will be critical to the business and it could lead to the failure of the business. And when you are looking at your critical success factors and you are thinking about the strategies of the organization in the future, you should always keep the critical success factors in mind. And what I mean by that is if you are coming up with a plan that looks great on paper, but it could potentially affect one of your critical success factors negatively, you should really consider whether it is worth doing. Now, for example, if the company has a very strong home market that is the, the foundation of its revenue, then when you're thinking about breaking to a new market, you should be considering how this will affect your current one. If it means possibly leveraging the success of your current market by going after this new one, then you should consider not doing it. Or you should have plans in place so that you do not neglect your home market when you are trying to expand into new ones. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the critical success factors of the organization of Sanchez Navarro. So we know excellent quality. Customers pay a premium price. Not only is the Sanchez Navarro product way more expensive than the average bath and body products, they're even more expensive than the average luxury product. So to charge such a premium price, quality is essential. And we know that they value quality because they spend a lot of time researching the best ingredients, the best methods of production. We also know that good customer service or good relations with customers is very important. Now, a huge amount of their revenue comes from concession stands in department stores. Therefore, maintaining good relations with the department stores is necessary to continue selling through these concession stands. Also, when you look at the online sales, the Sanchez Navarro website is praised for its usability and also the service provided by the direct business to consumer uh, chain, as in how quickly once the order has been placed, it arrives and the, quality, uh, the condition that it arrives in. Now, for example, if consumers were buying from the website and the products were coming up broken, etc., or not in the, uh, the uh, state that the, the consumer and the customer expects, then that could affect online sales. Next, we have the passionate founders of the organization, Freda Jones and Nisha Sa, who set up the company 16 years ago and have been instrumental in everything that the company has done. They were the, the visionaries of the business and have done well to grow and develop the business. So keeping them involved in the company is essential because they are in a sense the driving force of everything the company does. Now, effective delivery and efficient production are somewhat tied together. This is all about how the company gets from its inbound logistics, from its ingredients that it gets in to have the final product that goes onto the shelves in the concession stands or goes to the customer's door through the online sales. Now, given that quality is so important to the organization, it is important that the production maintains quality at all stages so regular quality control checks and zero wastage or as little wastage as possible simply because if something is not up to scratch it's not going to the consumer because quality is so important therefore you have to have a production process and a delivery and distribution process that maintains quality throughout and finally diversified product and channels so we have 30 different products, so we have many different ones and we have sell them in three big different ways or three different channels. We have the concession stands in the department stores, we have the online sales and also the Sanchez Novara branded shops. Now, the reason why it's important to have maybe so many different fragrances is because certain people will really like certain fragrances. And therefore, if you do not make 
uh, a different product, as in the foot cream, in that fragrance as well, they may not buy it. If they have grown up, you know, enjoying and purchasing the Topaz body lotion, but you do not make the hand and foot cream in Topaz, then they may not buy it. And the fragrance is very important, particularly for something that is going on people's skin, because that is what they are going to smell like. If they do not enjoy the fragrance, they're not going to put it on its skin, so their skin. So it's important that we have lots of different fragrances so that we can cater to all those different fragrance demands. So now we move on to stakeholders. So stakeholders is a term that I'm sure you're aware of. It's anyone who is affected by the organization and you should base your objectives around these stakeholders. If you have a, a new project that's going to bring a lot of money into the organization, that will benefit your shareholders. However, if it involves putting out your employees by making them work a lot harder and by forcing them to work a lot harder, then it's not going to benefit your employees. And therefore, you can question whether it's the right thing. So you should always consider how your project will affect every stakeholder. So let's take a look at stakeholders in relation to Sanchez Navarra. Now, Here's the matrix. So we have the people who are, have an interest in what we do, and that's the people who will be paying attention to what we do, and ones who have high and low power. So these are people who have the power to do something that will affect the organization. And the point of this matrix is to uh, stagger how much we care about certain stakeholders. Obviously, we want to care about all stakeholders, but ultimately, you cannot please everyone. So it's important to please the ones who will be most affected by your decisions. So let's take a look at the low interest, low power section. So these are people who don't really care what we're doing and wouldn't have the power to change it anyway. So I've got some classic examples here that we can relate back to the case study, such as the employees of buyers. And this also is the case of the employees of suppliers. So the people who we buy our raw materials and our fragrance ingredients from. Now, Ultimately, they're not going to really care where the product is going. They are just working at their organization and then it goes off to the supplier, uh, to the manufacturer, which is Sanchez Navarra. And likewise with buyers, once the product comes in, they're not necessarily going to care. Now, of course, we do not necessarily sell to many retailers at the moment. We sell online. It could be through to some wholesalers. But at the moment, we haven't, don't have that much information about our buyers. A lot of it is directly to the consumer. But the reason why this is important is because in the future, if, for example, Sanchez Navarro were to start selling to retailers, they would have to care about their employees as much as they care about the suppliers. And one of the reasons why this is important is because Apple recently got in trouble for the treatment of staff at one of its suppliers, one of the, the, the Chinese companies that created the products. Now, Apple had no direct control over this or any real way of knowing, but because they were being employed by Apple to produce these products, it looked bad on Apple. And also, I've already covered occasional customers here, as in people who buy a small amount every now and then. Now, are they really going to be a problem. Is there really going to be a problem if they get upset by something that Sanchez Navarro does? And I've also put here the employees of department stores. So uh, department stores obviously are crucial to the business of Sanchez Navarro. 70% of its revenue comes from selling through department stores. So the treatment of employees at those department stores is also important. If, for example, Gamal got in trouble for treating its employees poorly, then people may stop going to the Gamels or the Hawkins department stores. And therefore, they would not be in there to see the Sanchez Navarra concession stands. Now, next we have our Keep Informed section. This is people who have a lot of interest in what we do, but they haven't got too much power as individuals to change it. And so these would be our regular customers, such as the various consumers, and also our employees. Now, individual employees, we have quite a few. We have 297 employees. So there, they, there is a few of them, but 
if one particular employee is upset, is that going to really make a difference? Probably not. However, with labor intensive organizations such as this, one thing that is always important is unions. Now we weren't given any information on unions in the precinct, but it could be that the staff are unionized, in which case they could be a lot more powerful. They could move into that key players section because when the employees all band together as a union, they have a lot of power. If every person on the production staff was part of a union and the union decided to strike for whatever reason, then that would bring all production to a halt. Now we have our keep satisfied. So these are people who have a lot of power to affect the company, but are not particularly going to pay attention. And the two big ones here, which are generally the big ones for any company, and Sanchez Navarro is no exception, are governments and banks. Obviously, the government is the most powerful organization in a sense in any country, generally the case anyway. And so if they were to say change the law regarding wages, change the law regarding what can go into products, then that could have a major effect on Sanchez Navarro's production, a major effect on its operations. As with the bank, we know that Sanchez Navarro does have a bank loan, albeit a fairly small one compared to the revenue generated by the organization. But if the bank were to suddenly change the interest rates or it were to decide it wasn't going to give any more loans to Sanchez Navarro, then that could affect the company because it, it may not be able to get the necessary funding from the bank it needs to build and improve. Finally, we have the, the key players. So these are people who have a lot of power over the organization and are very interested in what the organization does. Now, of course, we know that the company was just bought by the TRU group. And of course, as the majority shareholders, they will have a very key interest in what the company is doing. If the company is not making money, that will make the TRU group unhappy. And also we have the founders of the organization. The founders we know are critical success factors to the organization because they are the, the innovation and the, the driving force behind the business. Therefore, if we do something that upsets the founders of the organization, they may stop being such a key part of the organization, which of course would be uh, bad for the organization. And with many of um, things relating to beauty and consumer goods, you also have trade regulators. So these are essentially bodies that it's their job to ensure that products are being ethically sourced, that um, they're using ingredients that are not harmful to skin, and they have a lot of power to, to shut down uh, companies because a lot of time companies will have to sign up under this uh, body to trade in the market. Now, a classic stand of this would be some sort of health and body you know, regulators who pass certain laws regarding what companies can put in their can put in their products, and quite often there'll be a logo on your product saying that it meets certain standards. Now, for example, like food standards or product standards. And if you do not meet those standards, you will no longer be able to have that logo on and that may affect whether consumers will buy from you or not. Lots of perhaps major retailers will only buy products that meet regulations. So I hope you've enjoyed this sample video and more importantly found it useful. Before I go, I'd like to quickly tell you about a few of the products that we do here at Astranti Financial Training, specifically for our case study courses. We have a study text which details all the key theories in which you will be expected to use in your case study exam, as well as details of how to approach the pre-scene and the case study. We also have a series of course videos detailing how to answer case study questions. This is actually an area in which many students struggle. Most of the scripts that I've seen, the failing scripts that I've seen, has actually been due to poor case study technique rather than lack of knowledge. We also have a series of pre-scene analysis videos based on the current up-to-date pre-scene detailing all the key bits of information and likely issues you may face in the exam. Next up is the industry analysis, a pack detailing information about the industry that the precinct company resides in, 
information about the key players within that industry and more background information on the industry in general. We also have a range of mock exams created for each level and based on the current pre-scene, which is a great way to get some practice in before you sit the real thing. We also offer marking and feedback on those mock exams so you can see where you are going wrong and where you can improve. Finally, we have the master classes. These are two one day classes taken by our expert tutors to give you all the, the hints and tips you need to really add to your chances of passing the ex exam. Also, if you take our full course, we offer a pass guarantee, which provided you have met all the requirements of the pass guarantee, you will get a free resit on the next exam should you fail to pass. So once again, thank you for your time. If you're interested in any of these products, please visit the website www.astranti.com for more information. Thank you.